Okay, this video is going to show three different examples, all using the sum the product formulas. Uh, so they're going to give us an expression, and we want to use sum the product formulas to take it from a, a sum or a difference into a product. Okay, so here's the first example we're going to look at. What you want to do is match it up with one of the formulas that we have here, and this is going to match up with the second formula. Whenever you have subtraction, the first one must always be x and the second one must always be the y. You can't switch those. So with, subtract, with addition you can, but with subtraction you can't. So we have to use it as is. We're going to put it directly into the second formula. We get 2 sine of x plus or x minus y over 2, so 5, 5 theta minus 3 theta over 2. And we're going to do cosine of 5 theta plus 3 theta over 2. Make this so you can actually see it. Okay, there we go. So now this is going to be uh, the setup. We use the second formula. It was sine cosine. So be really careful because some of these are sine cosine and some of them are the same one. So you got to be careful when you uh, write these out. So we have this. So now we just want to simplify. We get 2 sine 5 theta minus 3 theta. That's 2 theta. 2 theta over 2 uh, is just theta. And then this one, cosine, we have 5 theta plus 3 theta. That's 8 theta. 8 theta over 2 is 4 theta. So now we get this sine theta, cosine 4 theta, nothing more we can do there for simplifying, so that's as far as we can go. Okay, here's the next example. Cosine 2 theta plus cosine 3 theta. That would be using the third formula, okay, because we have cosine plus cosine. Now if I leave it in the form that it is right now and let x equal 2 theta and y equal 3 theta, that means when I get to that part of the formula I'm subtracting, and I'm going to end up with negative angle, which is okay because I could use an even odd property uh, to take care of that. However, a better way of doing it is to simply switch the order. Now with addition, you are allowed to switch the order and that's going to be fine. However, if you have a subtraction one, you're not allowed to switch the order because when you switch the order you get a different answer. So for instance, if I take 1 minus 2 and 2 minus 1, I get two different answers for that. But if I have addition, 1 plus 2 and 2 plus 1, that's the same. So for this, for addition, I am allowed to just switch the order around. And that's uh, not going to change my answer by doing that. Now I have this one I can call x and this one I can call y. I now have the larger angle as x. So that way when I do the formula now, I'm not going to worry about getting a negative angle. So I switch the order and I got that. I'm going to use the third formula, 2 cosine 3 theta plus 2 theta over 2, and I'm going to do cosine of 3 theta minus 2 theta over 2. Okay, I'm going to simplify this now inside since I've applied the formula, cosine cosine comes from that. Uh, that's going to be 5 theta over 2, which I can't do anymore with to simplify. And then I have cosine of 3 theta minus 2 theta over 2, that's theta over 2. Now that's as far as I can go. I do have fractions for each of these. That's okay to have my answer in that form, but I wouldn't be able to do any more. I can't make a cosine squared because I don't have the same angle in each of those, so this would be as far as I can go. Okay, here's one more. Cosine 4 theta minus cosine 7 theta. Now, in the last video I mentioned that you are allowed to change the order with addition, but you're not allowed to simply change the order with subtraction. So, in the notes, I actually went ahead and did it as is, and we ended up having to use an even odd property because we got 4 theta minus 7 theta. Now I want to show you there actually is a way that you can switch the order when you have subtraction. The way you do that is you actually factor out a negative sign. So I'm going to factor out a negative from this and show you a little bit different process from what was in the notes. Taking out a negative, we get negative cosine 4 theta. That's going to make that, if I take a negative out of a negative, that makes it a plus. So then I get uh, cosine 7 theta. So by doing that, I've, I've taken out a negative and now I have this. The only reason why I would want to do that is because this allows me now to switch the order. Cosine 7 theta minus cosine 4 theta. So by taking out a negative, you can always, uh, that allows you, by if I factor out a negative, you can switch the order. So now by doing that, now I can make the x uh, be 7 theta and the y is going to be 4 theta. I'm still going to use the, the fourth formula on that one, except now I've just switched the order by factoring out a negative. So now when I, when I do this, when I get to the part where I'm subtracting there, I don't have to worry about having a negative angle here. 
Now I have to be careful because I have a negative that I factored out, but there's also a negative here in the formula itself. So I have a negative times negative two. So I actually have two negatives happening there in that case. Then I have sine of x plus y seven theta plus four theta over two. And then I have sine of seven theta minus four theta all over two. So now I have that. Okay, um, when I, I have the two negatives, the two negatives will give me a positive. So I have a positive two. That's gonna be sine of, okay, if I add these together, that's 11 theta over two. And this is gonna be seven theta minus four theta, that's three theta over two. Okay, so now I have uh, a sine and a sine. But again, I can't make that sine squared because these are both different. I have fractions, that's okay as well. This is the same answer that I got in the book, or in the, uh, the, the notes, by going through the other process where we have a negative angle and using the even odd property. So I just wanted to show you this process to show you a different way of arriving at the same answer.